Yesterday, Sunderland decided, no, nope, enough's enough. Uh, they were ahead against Birmingham City at the weekend, ended up losing the game by two goals to one. That didn't define uh, his stay, though. Mick Beale sacked after only 12 games in charge at the Stadium of Light. And, of course, he's a former Rangers manager who was appointed in December, replacing uh, who then was in a very popular position at the club, Tony Mowbray, liked by most of the fans, as far as I could see. And they signed Beale on a two-and-a-half-year deal, but he's run of only four wins in 12, including a 3-0 home defeat by Newcastle in the FA Cup led to the Sunderland owner, uh, the young man that we know, of course, Simon Kirill, Louis Dreyfus, and the sporting director, Christian Speakman, to say enough's enough, and it's goodbye to McBeal. Um, you haven't been very complimentary about McBeal in the past, because we know that uh, this was McBeal, who was with Stephen Gerrard at Rangers, yeah. who got a job in management at Queen's Park Rangers, uh, who said no to Wolves and stayed, but then said yes to Rangers when they came in Glasgow. Mm. And he went up there and that didn't last. Now, this hadn't lasted. Where is your thought now as to where he's got himself? Well, listen, I'm disappointed for some to some extent for him because he's gone to Sunderland, not really been given a lot of time. And when he went there, he was not given any... Um, real support in terms of the, uh, you know people inside Sunderland particularly wanting there as manager I saw Sunderland play Hull on Boxing Day and I was quite pleasantly surprised at how well organised they'd got them and how decent a side they were so I thought maybe just maybe he'll be alright there um, he would have been better off served following what the suggestion I had for him a year ago or 18 months ago 15 months ago whenever it was staying at Queen's Park Rangers and the reasons why I, he attracted my ira was because he milked the uh, reflective glory of appearing to turn down Wolverhampton Wanderers and staying with the project of an opportunity that he was given. Yeah. He was given the opportunity by Queen's Park Rangers. He was a number two. There wasn't a queue of people that were looking for him to be a first-team manager. And Queen's Park Rangers gave him a chance, and he repaid them by leaving because he got ahead of himself and buying into his own press about where he was. And he went to Rangers, which I know is a job with, with, with great appeal because he'd been there previously with Steven Gerrard, but he needed to have learnt his trade and learnt his trade as a manager and he'd have been better off served at QPR. That being said, he made a choice. I didn't like the way he did it and that was my criticism. He got found out a little bit at Rangers because the timing probably was wrong. If he'd have been there this season with Rodgers and what he's doing at Celtic, he might have had a more fertile ground to land on. Well, you say that, he won 31 out of 43 games at Rangers. But what's that then? 60% win record. What's that get Rangers? I mean, that got John Barnes a sack, you know, once upon a time when he was the Ranger. Uh, well, Celtic he hasn't manager. got them to where yeah. Philippe Clement has got them, and that, that's the bottom line. Well, yeah. I mean, it, clearly it wasn't working. Clearly yeah. he wasn't ready for that job. Right. That doesn't mean he's not going to be ready for another job. And he goes to Sunderland and... For whatever reason, the 12-year-old owner decided to employ him and then subsequently take him out after 12 games. Now, surely you would have made the decision. It was a surprising decision. It wasn't a natural fit. I don't know why they took Tony Mowbray out in the first place, you know, and what that was about, you know, because ultimately he, he was doing a decent job. And he was popular. I think that was to do with the fact he spoke out of turn and perhaps talked about the transfer market when the owner um, was at school. Um, and he wanted <laughs> enough to make Kittle's sure yeah. that they got another manager in there. Right. And Michael Bill was a strange one, and it wasn't doesn't appear to be to have been received very well by the fans. But the most important thing is he's got a thirty three percent win record whilst he's at Sunderland, mm. and that's what's done for him. Mm. You know, they've dropped from he, where they were in the league, knocking on the playoff door, to tenth, and they're yeah. still within touching distance of the playoffs. And I don't think Sunderland were expecting to be in the playoffs this season albeit they got close last year. In fact, did they get to the playoffs last year? Well, I think they are expecting yeah. to be in, in amongst it this season because, mm, um, I mean, they've they've taken action at this particular time with uh, a sizable number of weeks left in the season, Simon, to get themselves further up the, the championship table to have a to have a pop at the playoffs. They were six last year. Yeah, so, okay. so they did get in the playoffs. Yes, indeed, thought, yeah. they did. Yeah. Um, we'll put it out there. Sunderland fans, why did you never take to this guy? Um, was it because of the particular part of the world that he comes from? He's from Bromley in London. You don't like Southerners at your football club. What is it? Why did you not take to Beale? Because many of you, from the word go, it appears, were just not having them. You can give us a call on that, 03717 uh, four. Maybe you could hear it in Beale's voice, uh, Simon, at the weekend, when a game that they looked like they were going to win, they ended up losing against Birmingham. Well, they're a young group, so when the their towels are up, the confidence is really high. And, and listen, I've got no doubt uh, 
that we'll go on to win a good few more games this season. Um, the game's being really harsh at the moment for us in, in isolated moments like set play. So uh, we're a really talented group, so I've got no issues with that whatsoever. So that was Beal at the weekend. But nonetheless, I mean, way before that, I think it was mid-December, you still weren't having him, Simon. Yeah. I also think he's a bit of a bluffer. I think he's one of those that talks a certain talk. He's now talking about the nature of the relationship with the management at Sunderland because one of the reasons why Mowbray was out the door is because he opened his mouth about transfers. He talked about needing transfer spend and that created a negative reaction from the owner of Sunderland because that wasn't on the, the agenda about the necessity to have more players. Look, I hope I'm wrong. You know, I want young managers to be successful. We want number twos coming out from underneath the umbrella of those that have got the top job and, and expanding the portfolio of managers we've got in this country. He started very well at Queen's Park Rangers. I don't like the manner in which he left Queen's Park Rangers because they gave him an opportunity. They took a punt. No one was running around saying, oh, that number two that used to work for Gerard that no one's really much heard of as a manager will give him a punt. QPR did. And they supported him and their reward for that was when they were going well, he got his head turned. I mean, the fans did not take to, to Mick Beale and it's as simple as that so many of them getting in touch saying there was a moment in the weekend game against Birmingham at Birmingham when he substituted yeah, Tri Hume yeah. and the player comes off uh, extended his hand to, to Beale and Beale totally blanked him saying afterwards that he, he didn't notice him and I think it went on Mick Beale to apologise for that as he blanked Hume I mean big deal on that yeah, but, but quite too. a lot of Sunderland fans are picking up in that there's Lee though as a Sunderland fan Mick Beale should never have been appointed at the club worst football I've watched in a long time they weren't having him um, mm. He was never going to make it. He was never going to get on their good side, no matter well, then you, what then the you, results were. Then you've got an uphill battle. I mean, he would have had a better case if he'd have won more games. Now, if you win four out of 12 games, and you you know, very early in your tenure, and clearly you've been put in a position of trying to, to build Sunderland up from the base that Tony Mowbray had left them, which was a decent base. Look, I am of the same mindset about Mick Peel in terms of clearly he can operate at a certain level, clearly he can coach, because he wouldn't have been in the positions that he has. Sure. I don't know what he said at interview stage. I don't know whether... I get, I also... You know, what's all this cobblers about shaking a player's hand when they come off anyway? Half the time you're giving them a hook because they've let you down. Why does a four-act over nonsense of giving them a big hug and all that? That's all playing to the gallery. Whether he ignored them or he didn't ignore them is irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. The fact of the matter is is that he's if, if he'd have won seven of his 12 games we possibly wouldn't be having this discussion. Sure. And, and that was yeah. then compounded by the fact that, for whatever reason, the Sunderland fans that are entitled to have watched their team in the League One for the last few years have obviously got delusions of grandeur about where they think they should be. Well, we'll see. I mean, certainly certain observers haven't missed and hit the wall uh, when it comes to Mick Beale, Chris Sutton on social media last night. Sorry to see Mick Beale go. He may go down as Sunderland's and Rangers' worst ever manager all in the same season. I mean, he's got a bit to go if he's going to turn it around, if he's going to stay in football, Mick and get back into it. I've met him on a number of occasions. I find him decent company, a good man, well-intended, wants the best. Yeah, um, I'm sure. But for whatever reason, it has gone pear-shaped. Of that, there is no doubt. And he needs to look at his decision-making process as the reasons why he takes jobs. Yeah. You know, and look at the better outcomes that could have been there. But he's a football guy. They, you know, they, sometimes they don't look beyond the end of their noses. He had a decent job at Queen's Park Rangers. He was, you know, given an opportunity and he should have afforded them a bit more respect. Yeah. And he didn't. And he's paid the consequences of making decisions that have been unwise. But the, the point is, is that Sunderland also have to look at their owner. Why take Tony Mowbray out, then bring somebody else in and then fire this guy after 12 games? Mm. Because that's not a good reflection of you either. No. No, I was down at Millwall and I saw Sunderland uh, playing. Jack Clark scored uh, that day for them. Um, I think it ended as a 1-1 draw, but it was plenty of fight in that Sunderland team and it was Mowbray in charge that day. Uh, there's one from Mark. Mick Beale came across as arrogant, uh, slagged off us, the fans, quite a lot. Um, we're not bothered where he came from. We just wanted the best for the football club. Um, did he slag off the fans? I find that hard to I believe. Doubt. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.